In 1903, the foundations were laid in several parts of the United States for broad educational programs for farm people. In that year, the use of organized farm demonstrations as an educational tool to improve American agriculture began almost simultaneously in Texas and in Iowa. Down in Texas, the boll weevil was threatening to destroy the cotton crop. And under the one crop farming system, failure of this crop spelled disaster for the people. Seaman A. Knapp, a former president of Iowa State College, was sent to Texas by the United States Department of Agriculture. And he saw the need to convince the people that a system of diversified farming was the solution to their problem. Dr. Knapp found a cooperator for a demonstration. He was Walter Porter, who lived near Terrell. Knapp solicited the cooperation of businessmen in Terrell, who agreed to underwrite any loss that Porter might incur. The demonstration program was a success, and within a short time, similar demonstrations were established throughout the South. Fifty years later, a marker was placed on the Porter Farm where the first cooperative demonstration between the federal government, a farmer, and local businessman was established. In Iowa, a demonstration program also got underway in 1903, in the same month as the demonstration in Texas. A Farmers Institute was underway on February the 18th at Hull in Sioux County. It was held in this building, which stood on the site where Hull's modern community center is now located. At the turn of the century, selection of seed corn was more or less a hit and miss proposition. Prior to planting time, most farmers went to their crib and picked out ears that looked good. If the germs in the kernels looked like they would grow, the corn was saved for seed. Even though their methods weren't scientific by present day standards, farmers wanted to know how to grow more corn. One of the speakers at the Institute in Hull was P.G. Holden, an authority on corn and a professor of agronomy at Iowa State College. In response to a question, he told his audience that it would be much better if the farmers of the community conducted corn growing demonstrations locally rather than basing their decisions entirely on the results of trials made at the college in Ames. And this statement appealed to the Institute. A resolution was passed and duly reported in the Hull Index. Fifty years later, John Hyman's left and Jake Moss, who attended the Institute, point out to C.O. Sawyer, former publisher and still an employee of the Index, the resolution passed at the Institute. Whereas it is believed that the Board of Supervisors, upon request, set aside a portion of the poor farm for such experimental farm and appropriate money to purchase seed and to pay the extra expense incurred in carrying on such experiments, as may be deemed best to be made. And whereas Mr. Harry Steed, a present superintendent of the poor farm, has kindly offered his service as far as possible without any extra compensation. Whereas it is believed that such experimental farm will be of great value to the farmers of Sioux County. Therefore, be it resolved that we favor such experimental farm provided that first, the poor farm or a portion of it can be secured for the purpose that the money necessary for carrying on experiments can be secured. Third, that the experiments for the first year be limited to the growing materials, grasses, and vegetables. Fourth, that the amount of money to be expended be limited to $250. Resolved further, that upon the adoption of this resolution, a committee of two be appointed to present this matter with a copy of the resolution to the Board of Supervisors together with a plan of action. And the record of that institute is also recorded in the files of the Sioux County Capitol at Orange City, where in 1903, the Dutch language dominated the local press, and the Volksfriend was the weekly paper. Sioux County's Board of Supervisors received the institute's petition favorably, and in the Sioux County Courthouse, their official action is recorded in book number four of the county board records. Sioux County Auditor M.J. Van Wyck shows the record to George Dunlap, Sioux County's first extension director, and to R.K. Bliss, former director of extension work in Iowa. The record reads, relative to establishing an experiment station on the county farm, on motion, the board made an appropriation of $150 to be used for an experiment station at the county poor farm. The committee appointed to superintend this work, J.E. Emery, H.J. Vanderwaal and H.H. McKee. As a result of the interest shown at the Institute and the action of the County Board of Supervisors, a cooperative demonstration was established. 
1953, George Dunlap and R.K. Bliss were so interested that with present extension director Dwayne Rowetter, they visited the field in which corn taken from the seed supplies and planter boxes of farmers of the community was planted. This visit prompted the people of home to make plans to properly commemorate the 50th anniversary of this beginning of agricultural extension. The anniversary celebration brought together some 300 Sioux County folks, state extension officials, William S. Beardsley, governor of the state of Iowa, Congressman Hogan, the former extension directors of Sioux County. But a venerable old gentleman of 89 years was the center of the celebration. He was Mr. Holden, the same gentleman who was present and a key figure in the start of the extension 50 years ago. Um, the Perkins uh, said that the question had been raised as to whether the experiments done at Ames would be reliable up here. Was it, uh, was it suitable up uh, here? That was a good question. Yes, and uh, it was. And uh, I, uh, I, uh, then he asked me uh, uh, two more questions, and, uh, and then I replied that uh, I thought that they were discussing one of the greatest questions that have been raised in this state and uh, in this country, uh, that uh, it, it was uh, sound, it is true, and that uh, I understand that you have a poor kind of poor farm up here and they want any of the farmers going wave wire. <laughs> <laughs> there weren't any poor people in the no. <laughs> and, uh, and the superintendent of the farm uh, said, that, well, what's the use of my going out here and just running this farm and getting nothing out of it for the county? And uh, they said, well, could you come back? Could, would you be willing to conduct some experiments out there? And he said that he would. Well, I said, that is simply wonderful. And I said that I will agree that someone will come up from the college and help you plan this and, uh, and put it on a sound basis so that you'll all be pleased with it. And I, I, and I, and I wish you Godspeed in your work. And but there was considerable opposition shown by certain parties, especially the uh, representatives who had been uh, followed with a, the, the, the original representative had uh, died uh, after the session of the legislature, and then this man was appointed but had no uh, duties. And he was very anxious to be elected to the position. Well, at about that time, the women in the back part of the hall, where they'd prepared a, a dinner, uh, notified us that uh, lunch was now ready. <laughs> and so we adjourned. And uh, after we adjourned, the women come around uh, me and said, Mr. Holden, he said, the reason why this uh, representative is opposed is that he thinks it'll make votes for him if he shows the spirit of economy. And he said, we want you to help us, if you will. So after the meeting, we again called to order. And then this man got up and said, well, let's not fool around with a few hundred dollars. Let's make it $5,000 and make it something worthwhile. I said, up, 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 every big thing started little, remember, and we'd better be careful. And they, of course, they all cheered then. And then a man got up, and he had a thing as big as this up on his head here, that the drone there, I don't know who he was, but he told the story. He said, now there's Bill. Think what a man could do. Uh, we had an agent here in this county. And I had already said that, why, you ought to have a county agent in every county. You have county superintendents of schools, why don't you have a county superintendent of agriculture? Agriculture makes every business and, 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 is, and, is, and is responsible for life itself. And, and so uh, then he, while this man was speaking, he said, just think of where that boy Bill, he said, Lord only creation knows where he is today. And he said it in such a way that they roared and laughed. And, and, uh, and, and Mr. Uh, Hawkins, he, while they were laughing, he put the question, all those in favor say aye, all those opposed say no, carry it. <laughs> His excellent memory still held many of the details of that early meeting, and there were others present, such as Reverend Ralston, who could help him reconstruct all the details of that early extension venture. Reverend Ralston told of being aboard a corn train, one of the early extension projects. Uh, 
They, that is, they, I, I'm very happy to meet somebody that was on that tra train. Right. They, that train was, uh, uh, had, I made 50 speeches in three days and the 20 minutes at a stop. And they came right into the car and used the car for an audience, you know. Yeah. And then they got out and they went to the next place. Yeah. And I made 50 speeches in those three days. When I came here over 50 years ago to northern Iowa, some of the progressive or more progressive farmers then had uh, told me that this will never be a corn country. We're too far north. But uh, now when our boys are pulling out a uh, hundred bushels of corn to an acre, uh, somebody was mistaken then. <laughs> and uh, sure it has certainly been largely developed by improving the uh, seed corn as well as uh, adding to the fertility and conserving the, the soil and building up the soil that makes uh, for good corn. That's wonderful, and let me say this right here. You say, you brought up this question of soil. Do you know one of our greatest problems in the future is going to be the take care of this blessed soil? It takes two things to make a great country, good soil and great people. And uh, go into the salt plains of Utah and Arizona and Nevada, and what do you see? No fertility there. On the other hand, we've got to have great people, good people, and that's willing to work as you people have done up through here, and uh, so that uh, we can have intelligent people on the farm. And that means education. I agree with that. And uh, we must learn to, to consider that uh, this soil and this rich soil here in northern Iowa is uh, uh, a uh, sacred thing, thing. Absolutely. You said exactly and, uh, the word. should not, it's wrong to uh, abuse it and uh, not use it to its greatest purpose that for which the great creator intended us to use it. Well, I, I say you're stating the, some of those most fundamental principles that uh, we're faced with now. Do you know that agriculture, agriculture is the business that makes the business for every other business in the United States or in the world. And when agriculture fails, and when we uh, fail to realize that the tremendous importance of it, then we are uh, falling way short of it. P.G. Holden was the first director of the Iowa Extension Service, and R.K. Blitz, who started his work under Holden, was the second. He was the director through most of the intervening years. Because the farmers of Sioux County in cooperation with Iowa State College, established here a system of successful county extension education that has spread throughout the country. It is a case of a creative, forward-looking group of farmers meeting with a creative teacher. And out of this meeting of minds, a new system of permanent adult education for farmers emerged. Here at the Sioux County Farm, Farmers Institute, was born the fundamental system of organi organization under which county cooperative extension work is now conducted throughout the United States. The plan developed here in 1903 went steadily forward. There has never been a backward step. After hearing from R.K. Bliss, the present associate director, Marvin Anderson, had a word for the future. But to arrive at the point of action, that's up to you just as it was 50 years ago. You and people like you in every community in Iowa must say, what is wanted? What is needed? You must designate the problem just as you did 50 years ago. Progress does not arise from formulas arrived by a select few or from government or from hired hands. It can only come by reflection, planning, and action with a purposeful direction of and by all the people concerned. The Cooperative Extension Service has always been, has been always had its roots in the local community, and has always been guided by the people themselves, the local staff, 
such as we have in this county, the county extension director and the county extension home economist, are your hired hands to carry out this in the kind of program that you want through the resources of Iowa State College and the United States Department of Agriculture. And still speaking with the same enthusiasm and zeal for extension work that he had 50 years ago, P.G. Holt. Uh, I am very proud to come back to this spot where 50 odd years ago I met with a group of your people here at an institute and they were started then a movement which has had a wonderful result throughout not only this state but all the states of the Union and is now going to the other countries of the world. And why is it was so important? Because it came from the people. It's what they wanted. And uh, that is the source of democracy. And uh, you know, uh, as I think of it, that uh, when follow it, and any of you that'll follow the history of this thing, and, and in other words, I say, why do I think it's so important? Because it led to one of the greatest developments at our, in our state and our college and in the United States, that of the extension work, taking it right to the people in their homes. And when I came off from that first uh, train and uh, the people come in, uh, editors from New York, to know what had happened, why the idea of going right out in the train and talking to the people, taking agriculture right to the home, why they said we never have heard of anything like that. And uh, they were so surprised at that method. Well, that has gone now down so that every county has uh, a county agent that get in contact with the people, and it led to extension work. That and the two other things, but this was one of the fundamental things. People said, we want more of this. And when I, uh, Mr. Wallace asked me if I'd draw up a bill establishing an extension department here were the people from here and Red Oak and other people, places where we'd had these corn trains, said that's the kind of work we want. And we want to have a department that gives all of its time to taking these things out to the people. You see, we had what uh, Lincoln was once asked, uh, what are the three, uh, uh, which of the three departments of the government is most important, executive, legislative, or judicial? And when uh, Abe Lincoln and his customary way said I will answer your question by asking you a question. Which leg of a three-legged stool is most important? Now I said you've got teaching, you've got experimentation, you haven't taken it to the people yet. And that's what this started, was taking it right to the people, right here in the county. See what their own corn is doing by the side of the other people's corn. You don't get but progress by long range. Uh, <laughs> poking at people. You've got to go right with them and be with them and help them. Right at home. The best things that I've ever done all came from someone like this. I didn't start this. Some of your people wanted to know why they couldn't have some experiments here and bring it close to them. And I saw at once what it meant to the future. And I told them so. I said it'll go over the United States if you people will uh, start this movement. And it has and it's been strengthened. Who would want to take out now and go back and take all of that work out, like the county agent work and uh, the, the demonstration farms and the short courses that got right to the people, going to the people where they are. They all paid for it, and why shouldn't they all have some of it? And I think that, I, I'm not saying that one department is more important than another, but it's one of the three legs of the stool now. And it's a very important. Now throughout the nation and in every Iowa county, an extension director is employed. In many counties, a home economist and a youth assistant also work in this program that combines at the request of the people. The resources of their own organization, of the county government, the state government, and through the United States Department of Agriculture, the federal government. The State Land Grant College coordinates the research of the State Experiment Station and the federal research agencies to bring to the people the latest findings. These are relayed back through county extension offices to the people. And so in 1953, on the same field, on the same farm, where cooperative demonstration work began in Iowa in 1903, a demonstration program still goes on. 
Instead of corn, potatoes were planted in 1953 to find what rate and what kind of fertilizers would produce the maximum yield. But throughout Iowa, corn is still the crop in which farmers have the most interest, just as they did in 1903 when the groundwork for cooperative extension work was laid. The extension service has taught me through the McLean system to raise better swine. The extension service through soil conservation has taught me how to keep my farm from washing away. The extension service has helped me in the selection and feeding of livestock. I've been a 4-H leader for 21 years, and I've had contact with about 80-some girls, and to see them grow up and be their leader has taught me to be a, a better girl in myself as well as all the rest of the girls. It's been my college education.